Uh, something that's been itching in my head for a while was John oh versus Alex's view on VC yeah. implementation. Uh, I don't think there's actually a versus here, but let's carry on. Is on there? one side, yeah. John kind of praised uh, Tears of the Kingdom for using double buffer to probably lower input latency. On the other, Alex <laughs> banged teardown developers' heads together for oh. using double buffer on Xbox Series X. Now, I'm not looking for which one is the best, but rather when to use them or not. Tearing is also an option. And for Alex, each GPU vendor has their own implementation of vSync. When would you use those over the standard? C -c -c -combo, qu combo question adding fire oh. to the adding fuel to the fire i would like a little word on the true triple buffer implementation of amd versus nvidia i'm not sure what that's about oh. um, surely this is a case where if your frame rate is consistent at 30 or 60 or whatever your frame rate target is double buffer is better because right because you get lower latency right well, also it, tears of the kingdom does have drops but right. uh, i feel like the 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 target frame rate being 30 already cost you some input response and like adding triple buffering on top of that tends to make the game feel extra muddy. I think yeah. mm -hmm. uh, that extra frame does matter. And yeah, I mean, if it was, I, I find that in my, when I played it, I didn't think it dropped like constantly or anything. It was mostly pretty, pretty okay outside of some busy areas. But uh, I think in that case it made sense. But Alex, of course, Seeing what happened in Teardown, I think yes. you, you can explain why this yeah, is good. Sixty FPS to the thirty is uh, this huge visual drop. I think thirty to twenty is not good, but it's no. a handheld. It's a handheld device. I I just have like different expectations there. And here, Same. there's no reason for it to be sixty to thirty drops, especially since any that game had such variability of load that you would just like. You could just like start uh, a chain reaction demolition and it would just go straight down to 30 instead of maybe 58. Yeah. Which, you know, it like, was devastating to the 120 hertz mode as well. Yes, too. Yeah. Like that's one where it made it, it made it absolutely pointless to play in the 120 hertz <laughs> mode on Xbox Series X. There's no reason. It was basically almost never 120 other than when you just like look around and not interact with the world, which the game is all about interacting with the world. When. So uh, I'd say that answers part. One, uh, the the we all explain different preferences there. The part two is when would you use driver vsync versus game vsync? Uh, uh, driver vsync in those instances when uh, a game's vsync for some reason is not working correctly. I've talked about Halo Infinite on the channel a couple of times. Yep. <laughs> that game doesn't still have a working vsync implementation. Um, now, the question about true triple buffering versus not, and this is just a misnomer at this point in time. Technically, on NVIDIA, there's two versions of triple buffering you can enable. Um, the The default driver's VSync is triple buffered. If you just type, if at least in DX12 and DX11 it is. I don't. I haven't done a DX9 title in too long. I'm pretty sure it should be the same, where you turn that on. If it drops a frame, it will not be double buffered. It will go down to 58 if we're talking about 60 hertz here it'll do that and it'll show normal triple buffering behavior but what it will not do is it will not render excess frames above um above just like three back buffers there or two sorry two um <laughs> it will not render excess above that so your gpu will be capped in performance in like actually internally so if you look at your uh, gpu utilization it will still be like 50 percent. let's say if you true triple buffering would actually max out your gpu and then would choose the frames that are most recently rendered to go out the problem with that is you're reducing input latency and you can feel it you can definitely feel the difference but you're potentially giving a non linear interpretation of the frames out there so you could if you're moving the camera you could see different animation steps uh in terms of the time in between each of them uh of the camera movement and or the character movement of your game uh that's one of the things i talked about this in the video and now i don't know how vsync by default works on uh uh AMD, I was about to say ATI because I've been playing with these all these ATI cards recently. Um, <laughs> AMD, but they both have the equivalent of fast sync, which is true triple buffering, like I talked about earlier, which renders in excess of whatever your refresh rate is, and you can see it. 
uh, if you play a game, if you turn on fast sync, you can see like it's saying like 120 FPS, even though you have a 60 Hertz monitor. Uh, both NVIDIA and AMD support this. It's called fast sync on NVIDIA. I'm forgetting the word for it on AMD, but they both support this. So I don't think there is actually a discrepancy between the two of them at all anymore in the modern thing. The only thing that I've noticed, uh, and I haven't tested this in a long time. The last time I tested it is when I was looking at Scanline Sync from RTSS, which I don't even think I ended up making a video for it even back in the day. But I think on AMD, if you turn on whatever Fast Sync is, it will render uh, completely arbitrary frame rates above your refresh rate. So it could go up to like 88, let's say, um, or I don't know, some some non-divisible refresh. It can render up to non-divisible frame rates. But on NVIDIA, the last time I looked at it, it did only malt, it only rendered in excess of your refresh rate in multiples. So it would do like 61, 20, 180, 240. Uh, uh, and I think it would cap the GPU below that because I think they're trying to look for like actually like, like, I don't know how to say it, like divisible sequences of time instead of just arbitrary sequences of time. This is, uh, getting, this is getting deep. It, this is getting deep, but like these are also the timey wimey. It will be wobbly timey wimey stuff. Um, to say the least, I think they both support it these days. Both vendors support uh, true triple buffering, and you'd really only use it if I think if you're on a V-synced display and yeah. you don't have VRR. Otherwise, you're probably better off using reflex and or capping. Surely most people these days have VRR displays. I don't know. We've kind of yeah. uh, overemphasized, I think, in the past, people having newer displays uh, when they don't. But I don't yeah. know. 